Good morning and welcome to today's focus for Tuesday, December the 6th, 2022 at 1110 a.m. Central Time. Today's focus, navigating the very strange and often contradictory world of Christian morality. I know that, that that's a big, that's a mouthful, right? Today's focus is navigating the very confusing and often contradictory world of Christian morality. If you have been a Christian for any length of time, you realize navigating the world of Christian morality at times can just be baffling. I mean, I look, I've been a Christian now since I was a teenager, and that's been a number of years. And all I can say is I'm still confused by it. I still don't understand it. And when I look back over my Christian life, I, to be honest, just dealing with the, the bizarre world of Christian morality has led to so much difficulty and frustration in my Christian life that it's only by God's grace, it's only because salvation is a work of God that I'm even still a Christian. Because from a human perspective, I would have said, you people are absolutely nuts, and I would have walked away. I would have said, you people are so confused and just out of your minds that I want nothing to do with Christianity. Because it is maddening. Let, let's let's try to walk through the weird, 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 weird world of Christian morality, okay? Let's just, let's start with some things very simple. You can watch a, you can watch a PG-13 movie, but you cannot watch a rated R movie. See, see, PG-13, that's okay. Once you enter into the world of rated R, oh no, 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 no. Now you've entered into sin, Rated R, sinful, PG-13, it's magically good all of a sudden. Oh, let, let's let's add something else. Oh, okay, let's see if this works. You can watch secular movies. You can watch secular television shows, but you cannot listen to secular music. No, no, no. Secular, secular movies, okay. Secular television show, okay. Secular music is an absolute no. It's a work of Satan. It's a tool of the enemy. You can watch movies or television shows. That may take God's name in vain, that may have other forms of obscenity, as long as there's not too many, as long as there's not too many, but you cannot listen to any music that would dare use an obscenity. That is a bridge too far. You've now entered into sin, so we got to keep this straight. Okay, so rated R, wrong. PG-13, okay. Secular television, secular movies, okay. Secular music, not okay. Television or music that may have some obscenities, Secular television or secular movies that have obscenities, okay. Secular music that may have obscenities, clearly not okay. Sinful, wrong, may even be satanic. Let's see what else we can, uh, things I've experienced. Oh, you can't go to the movie theater. Oh, but, now this is dating me a little bit. You can go to the video store and rent movies. Okay, that's, that seems interesting. I can't go to the movie theater. All right, let's see. You can't play cards, but you can play, I guess, dominoes and other other games. I don't know. Something weird about cards. They're, they were a satanic plot to destroy the world. You can't do that. Oh, you cannot dance. You cannot dance. Dancing is of the devil. You can't dance. All right. That that is that that is an absolute no. Uh, but you can engage in sporting events. I guess that's that's okay. Um, I see. Oh wait. Oh, here's a big one. Lord of the Rings. Positive, good, godly, wonderful, the greatest form of entertainment. Harry Potter, sinful, ungodly, demonic, evil, may destroy your children. Right? Let's see what else. What else can you do? Oh, you can you can spend uh, as much time as you want watching sports, uh, but once again, you can't listen to secular music. Uh, that's that's the. That's the beginning of the end. That will destroy you. That will, that will be the end of your life. And see, what are some other wonderful things in the Christian world? Oh, there's, it, it, there's certain sins that if a pastor commits, they are disqualified forever. But there's all these other sins that they commit 
that they're okay. Even though in many cases, the sins that are in question are not even listed or even mentioned in the passage that gives the qualifications for a pastor. Like it doesn't even mention that sin, but if you commit that sin, you're disqualified. But if you commit other sins, you're okay. It's just like some bizarre, just this is okay. This is not, okay. this, this is okay. This is not okay. It's it, sometimes it's so just trying to navigate it is insane. And the contradiction in it, oh man, the contradiction is just so like, you, 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 can, you can watch this, but you can't listen to this. I mean, I could just go on and on and on because I've been dealing with it my whole Christian life. And every time I just, I literally will look at the people like, you can't be serious. Do you hear yourselves? Do you, do you hear how utterly insane you sound? And sadly, Sometimes it's the teenagers who are far more aware of the utter insanity of their Christian parents. So wait a minute. So you can watch that, but I can't listen to this. So you can do that, but I can't do that. Whoa. Where do you get these rules from? And they'll say, I get the rules from the word of God, right? Because, you know, because if you throw out scripture, then your position always becomes <laughs> obviously the superior one. And it's just, it's maddening at times. Navigating the world of Christian morality, do you find it as confusing, as dumbfounding, and as contradictory as I have seen it my entire Christian life? You just let, when Christians just start talking about wrong and right, and what's amazing is how much they will throw out these utter, like, dogmatic declarations of that being sinful, that being wrong, but they, they, and then they'll just take any scripture that they think that will work to justify that. For example, you listen to secular music, love not the world. They'll immediately say, love. but wait a minute, you're watching secular television. It's different. You're listening to secular music, love not the world, but they're watching sporting events. Oh, well, well, Paul used sporting metaphors. So sports have to, has to be okay. And you're like, it's just the most it's, it's, it's crazy. I, I, I don't even, I don't even like the, the, I don't even like trying to navigate it. I, I just literally want to burn the whole system down and say, I think our, our morality is the most subjective, crazy. And, and I, I dare I say Christian parents uses Christian morality in many cases, just to beat their kids over the head and put them in some kind of submission. And that we use Christian morality to condemn other people. It, it is it is really crazy. Now, why am I bringing all of this up? Because, well, today's focus, it is navigating Christian morality, but I want you to just think of one specific issue. Are you ready? Here, here's what I want you to do. Gambling. Right or wrong? Sinful or not sinful? Gambling. Now, there are some Christians who are absolutely like, gambling is wrong. Gambling is a sin. You're throwing away God's money or you're throwing away money. You're not being a good steward of your money. But see, then this raises questions. Okay, wait a minute. So gambling wrong. That the Gambling is absolutely wrong. Going to a sporting event, which costs money, is okay. Gambling is wrong. Using money for a number of other issues where you don't even, rather, you, you know, you may not even uh, find anything actually, you, you don't even have anything you can really show for it, right? You just go on a trip or you buy fireworks or you, you go to this event. In other words, all you, all you have left with after it's over is just some memories. You don't even have anything tangible. They would say, that's okay, but, but no, 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 no. Gambling is a bridge too far. It is sinful. Now, the reason I bring this up is because of a news story. Now, they don't look at it from a, um, yeah, someone just pointed out that they don't, they're not a good steward sometimes when they go to Starbucks. I, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess you do get something from it, but nothing to last. I guess you can keep the cup, right? I guess you can keep the cup and say, look, I have a Starbucks. Cup. I don't know. But there's just so many issues like that. So a lot of people, gambling is just absolutely considered a sin. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. 
and others will say not. But that's, once again, the, the weird world of Christian morality. I, I can't even follow it. I mean, I've tried to follow it in my Christian life. And it's all, and the reason I use a lot of music examples is because that was constantly the thing I had to struggle with because it's like all of my music was wrong, 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 sinful. And I would like, but you can do that and watch that and do that and that and that and that. And that's all good. I don't understand. But they would try to quote some scripture, usually tell me, love not the world, love not the world. It's like anything I did was loving the world. Everything they did was godly. It, it's just, it's insane. But here's the news article. Here's the news article. All right. And I'm going to read it just the way it's written. All right. This is literally the way it's written. And if you're offended, I apologize. But this is literally the way the headline reads. You freaking idiots. Dave Ramsey just blasted U.S. universities for promoting online gambling to students and reaping millions in fees. Why young people are the perfect prey. Sports betting is surging across the United States of America with flashy ads and easily accessible apps encouraging wagers both at home and in stadiums and has slinked its way over to several college campuses as well. The New York Times recently uncovered that at least eight universities have partnered with online sports betting companies, while at least a dozen athletic departments and booster clubs have signed agreements with brick-and-mortar casinos. Personal finance author, radio host Dave Ramsey, lambasted the institutions on The Ramsey Show. You freaking idiots! Selling out your own students who you're supposed to be caring for, said Ramsey. The number two addiction in North America today and fastest growing addiction in North America today is online gambling. It starts with the sports betting as a gateway drug. The National Council on Problem Gambling says researchers estimate about three quarters of college students gambled in the past year and 6% have a gambling problem. So Dave Ramsey is furious, he's upset, he's mad because, well, universities are getting involved in gambling. Now, whether that's a good idea, bad idea, I mean, 6% of college students have a problem with gambling. I mean, I, I, I have to kind of try to hold my tongue here. How many percent, what's the percentage of college students having a problem with alcohol? But, 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 okay, but that's, gambling, that's a bridge too far, Binge drinking, I guess, is okay. I'm not, I'm not saying he would say binge drinking is okay. Just seems gambling is a strange thing to get so upset about, but okay. So, but here's the thing. Here's the question. Again, today's focus is supposed to be 15 minutes. I never, I never accomplished that, but okay. Gambling. I want you to come up with the five best verses that you can come up with that would be against gambling. Maybe five verses that would, I don't know, just see, just do this. I don't know if you can come up with five verses that would support it. Let's do this. Five verses that would condemn it and five verses that may give you liberty or freedom to engage in it. There we go, all right? Because I'm thinking of, I have specific verses in mind, but okay, let's do it. I'll word it that way. Five verses, you're like, this would condemn gambling and that any Christian who engaged in it, it would be a sin. And five verses that would be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, this would fall under liberty. This would fall, fall under freedom. So how can you judge me for it? That's what I want you to focus on today. Shouldn't take you long. And again, this is not a Bible study exercise, so it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just throughout the day, I want you to just think, what verse would I come up with that would condemn gambling, that would just absolutely condemn it? And the reason I want you to do that is I don't, I don't really care, and, and this is not about Dave Ramsey. This is not even about gambling. What this is about is once again trying to navigate the world of Christian morality. That's why I started that today's focus is about navigating the often confusing very often contradictory world of Christian morality. Because here's what happens. Sometimes when you start digging into the scriptures, going, wait a minute, why is this right? Why is this wrong? 
sometimes you'll find yourself just completely baffled. Like, I don't understand how Lord of the Rings is supposedly the pinnacle of Christian morality. It's the, it's basically, you know, you've got, you've got the Bible and then you've got Lord of the Rings. And in some Christians mind, I think Lord of the Ring, Lord of the Rings actually is above the Bible. And when I say that, some Christians get offended, but trust me, criticize Lord of the Rings and watch Christians lose their absolute minds on you. But my goodness, if they see you carrying the, a copy of Harry Potter, they lose their absolute mind on you. Like you're satanic, demonic, and I do not get it. I'm like, I don't understand how one can be so right and the other one can be so evil. And when you try to go to scripture, they'll be like, well, 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 Harry Potter's got magic. Magic is condemned. Magic is condemned. Well, you, what, 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 Lord of the Rings? You don't have, what, what? How do you, how do you pull this off? And it's some weird, you know, it's just so weird. And they'll say, well, one's a Christian, a Christian allegory. And you say, well, try to explain the allegory to me. And then they stumble over themselves. They'll have no clue what they're talking about. It's just mind boggling to me. The, the world of Christian morality has never made any sense to me. Never made one. It's ne- never made any sense to me. And I've tried to figure it out, but it's just so confusing. And I've told the story a million times that as a Christian teenager, when I first became a Christian, it was almost immediately I was told, boom, you do not listen to secular music. Boom, you need to get rid of that music. You need to burn some of those albums. Okay, all right. I remember the song Brilliant Disguise by Bruce Springsteen, right? I think it uses one obscenity, right? The thing that holds back water, right? And then next thing you know, so I'm like, okay, I got, I got to get rid of Bruce Springsteen. I mean, the album has lots of religious imagery in it, but okay, okay, all right, um, I got to get rid of this. And then I'm over at the pastor's house, and I'm like, wait, you can watch that movie, but I can't listen to Bruce Springsteen? What kind of stinking nonsense is this? Like, you people are out of your mind. Like, it made no sense. And then just from there, it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's always this confusing thing. It's just so like, this is, this is the sin that is a, but there's all these other sins that somehow just are like, you know, well, I mean, nobody's perfect. Like that sin, boom, it's the end. It's the end. These sins are okay. And then sometimes it's even like, again, just go to pastors. It's like, you look at the actual qualifications and And in many cases, people actually fail those qualifications, say pride or anger. Nothing ever happens. But then there'll be some sin that's not even listed there. And they'll be like, that's it. They're disqualified. They should never breathe again. And you're like, well, wait a minute. How does this work? And then they'll use things like, look at David. He committed a sin and he didn't get to build the temple. See, there's consequences. And you're like, yeah, but who did build the temple? (laughs) Solomon. Okay. Hello. Okay. So how do you understand? It's so just weird. And to just grab random verses out of any meaningful context. The, the world of Christian morality is a bizarre world that is just so just arbitrary and subjective. And, and I hate to say it, what I have seen, it's typically Christian parents. They don't like something They'll use their Christianity in order to condemn it and tell their kids, you can't do that. You can't watch that. You can't listen to this. You can't do that because we're Christians and Jesus says no. While the while the teenagers, they're looking at, wait a minute, I can't do this, but you can do that. And then they basically like you're a bunch of stinking hypocrites. I don't even think it's a much, as much about being hypocrites. Is It's just Christians don't ever think about their their supposed Christian morality and take it any, to anything close to a logical conclusion. Like if you say this is wrong, well then what would be the logical, if you say this is right, what would be the logical conclusion? And I trust me, I've tried to teach some of these things in church and Christian parents get ticked off, especially when I do the whole, you watch secular television, but your kids can't listen to secular radio or secular you know music. Oh man, watch Christian parents just lose their mind on you. They will go crazy. So today, I want you to think about Christian morality first and foremost, but let's use gambling just as a as an issue. How many times have you been told gambling is wrong? Gambling is a sin. As, we need to be against gambling. Well, what scriptures would you use? And you got to think those scriptures through because if you applied them to gambling, what else would they go against? And then 
And, and I think it really comes down to a lot of those scriptures what I, that, I, that I think we need to have a better grasp on about Christian liberty. Like you may have the liberty to do something, the freedom to do something. And many Christians say that we have liberty or freedom, but the minute you engage in certain things and you say it's Christian liberty, they'll say that's because you're a weak Christian. It's just, it is weird. Like typically, I think in some cases I would rather talk about morality with atheists than I would with Christians. And I know that's going to offend people. But because it's shit, and you say, well, the atheists, they don't have a, they don't have a basis for their morality. Okay. And I think in many Christians, the only basis for their morality is what they make up and what scripture they rip out of context, typically to judge someone else or to control someone else. All right. This was a happy go lucky today's focus, wasn't it? It was a wonderful, a good, exciting, an uplifting. It really wasn't. It really wasn't. It really wasn't. I was I was joking today. I was I was going to come up here and say, welcome to today's focus, where we're going to navigate the very confusing, often contradictory world of Christian morality, because I've spent half the night trying to navigate the world of sleep. Oh, man, last night I needed sleep and it was it was horrible. It was horrible. So so I guess a a a, frustra- a frustrating today's focus to cap off a frustrating night. Is, does that work? I guess. I don't know. I don't know. All right. There you have it. Today's focus for Tuesday, December the 6th, 2022, navigating the confusing, often contradictory world of Christian morality focused primarily today just for a test, just for an exercise on gambling. Would love to hear your thoughts and what you discover. God bless.